I recently gave a lecture on breast cancer risk reduction, and I was sad to find that intake of vegetables, polyphenols, is such an important predictor of future risk of breast cancer, like when you're 50, 60 plus. And the most important time is when you're a teenager. Now, I have one daughter that eats vegetables. She loves them. And I have another daughter who eats food that's beige. And it's very hard to get her to eat the volume of vegetables, you know, five colors a day, which is what I do. And if you have evidence that you could show a 17-year-old that they've got micronutrient gaps, I think that would be a motivator for them to eat differently at a time when it's so critical. Even though it's, you know, 25 years in the future that it's going to potentially change this arc that they're on. What do you do for a young woman who doesn't like vegetables is or is not somehow able or willing to to get those five colors a day of vegetable to help support the microbiome? You know, are supplements a, a useful tool in that case? Um, what other sorts of tools, behavioral or otherwise, are useful? Such a good question. So here I'm going to invoke Rob Knight at UCSD. So I think his his uh, his gut project has really been helpful in terms of understanding what kind of modulators are going to be important. So what I try to get that person to do, and I don't see many teens anymore other than NBA players, what I try to get them to do is to have a smoothie. Very hard to get them to have a smoothie every day, but if I could get them to have a smoothie three times a week, and to throw some of these vegetables in, that makes a huge difference. Mm. I mean, we know that makes a difference in terms of microbiome change. These are people blending up broccoli or kale. Cauliflower. So cauliflower is great. Even they're putting things into the smoothie. Yeah, I don't know if you can get a teenager to do that, but they (laughs) often will use, like I have them do steamed broccoli that's in the freezer because it's got very little taste. So that, they could do that in a chocolate smoothie. They could add some greens. I like greens powders are super convenient. So that with, you know, kind of a a taste that they like, whether that's chocolate, which is what most of my clients want, or, you know, vanilla with berries and that sort of thing. So that can go a long way if you don't like vegetables. And short of that, I would say some supplements, but I would say that's a distant second to making a smoothie. I've got one patient that I have to mention because um, he took this to the extreme. So he's a retired physicist professor at UCSD. He found out that his microbiome was a hot mess and um, developed autoimmune disease. And so he became hellbent, like only a physicist could, on changing his microbiome. And he dramatically shifted it by having a smoothie every day with 57 vegetables and fruits in it. 57 independent. 57 independent. So, I mean, this just warms my heart the way that he did this. But he would go to the farmer's market. He would just get a bunch of this, a bunch of that. And he would go home, make the smoothie, and then stick it in the freezer. So he'd have a serving every day. And he became a completely different person based on this microbiome change. His... uh, Autoimmune disease is in remission. He um, he dropped a huge amount of weight. He went from being, you know, kind of this phenotype that I know you know well, of a professor, high performing, traveling around the world on so many boards, so much innovation, so many great ideas, supercomputer guy, to being someone who gets up in the morning, gets in his hot tub, exercises for like one to two hours a day, and then does a little work. Like he completely shifted the way that he lives and his microbiome shift, you know, who knows what, what's the chicken and what the, what's the egg there, but he had a huge change in his physiology. Glucose went from being quite high. He had, and he tracks all of this, of course, it's like on Scientist a Jupiter. after all. Right. Yeah. He's, and retired, I suppose might've had. Some, and he's retired, more. but he's, he's got the longest time series of anyone I know. And he's tracked his glucose and insulin going back 20 years. So he can show you, okay, here's where I started having my smoothie. And here's how my glucose and insulin changed as a result of that. 